What's going on guys? I'm excited to finally bring you guys another YouTube video. I know it's been a little bit and I know there's a lot of questions going around and a lot of things kind of circulating and I want to kind of finally clear the air in this video but before I do that I need to start at the beginning. Now, ever since I was a little kid, I was absolutely fascinated with the idea of making money. I was interested in every aspect of it. How much does a mailman make? How much does this grocery store worker make? How much money does the grocery store make when they sell this apple? Well, how much do you make if you actually own the grocery store? Now, questions like this would constantly circulate my head. I always knew I was different, but the question was how. My dad always said to never work for anyone but yourself. At this point, I didn't understand how this was possible, but after learning more about business, from that day on, I knew that's where I needed to be. Okay, so where do I start? One thing I've always been into is music. The first instrument I learned how to play was the drums. I played since fifth grade, and around that time I was thinking of ways on how to make money since I couldn't get a job yet due to my age. I watched a lot of YouTube at the time as well. One day I saw a viral video pop up my recommended of someone playing the drums on buckets, which now has 180 million views. That video inspired me to go out and try it myself. So I grabbed some drums, and I grabbed some buckets, and I went for it. I would go downtown and make anywhere from $40 to $80 an hour. This was the first real taste I had at making any type of real money. Now where things really started was in 8th grade. As you can see, I was in the jazz band in middle school. One day while I was in 8th grade, my best friend at the time, Kyle, came outside wearing a pair of Flight 23 Jordans, which at the time I thought were the coolest shoes. So that night I went home on eBay and found the cheapest similar looking pair I could find and I bought it. 8th grade Kyle, you know, broke as heck. Yeah, yeah. still broke. But my prized possession was this ugly pair of Flight 23s. Mm. It was like white, gray, and black, you know, just something neutral that would go with everything I wore. Okay. And they look like bricks, man. I'm telling you, they, they were solid. You still have them, don't you? Yeah. I, I, actually, actually, I actually tried to give them the can, just like a, like a memento or whatever, but this man didn't want any part of that. <laughs> They're like, so, like, beat up. Oh, my Last God. Last time I saw, I don't know how that looks now. There's dirt all over them. I was like, yeah, dude, you can frame this. Cam's like, nah, bro. Don't, don't give me those. Don't give me those. Yeah. So I just, like, started wearing them, and like maybe, like, a week later, Cam shows up to the bus stop with the exact same <laughs> pair of shoes. Yeah. And back in the day, like... If two dudes were wearing the same shoes, it was not cool. Oh, yeah, man. I'll was... tell you guys too, like how I got them. So I went home on the internet, did a little researching on the eBay. Yeah, and uh, I looked up Jordans, and because obviously we were in eighth grade, I didn't have any money either. So I did from price low to high. So I was trying to find the cheapest pair of Jordans that I could buy, and it was this ugly pair of Flight 23s. Jeez, They're even more uglier than his because they didn't have the at least like the black and yeah, so it was just the white black and, and it was just white and gray. They were so ugly. Same model. I remember they were too small too because it was like a size seven. I didn't know what size they were because I wasn't like buying shoes like that. So yeah, the size seven pair of white and gray Flight 23 Jordans. That's what got me started. Yeah, first ever pair of Jordans. That was kind of a funny story for you guys. The first shoe I ever camped out for was the 2017 Royal Ones. This was before they went for anything on go to StockX, so I tried reselling them on eBay, but it didn't go very well, so when I turned 15 I started working at Chick-fil-A, and I used all my paychecks to buy personal shoes. Now after being in the shoes for a little bit, still watching a lot of YouTube, I started watching sneaker YouTubers, which were really popular at the time, which is crazy looking at it today that I know all of them now. The first video I saw from Blake Wynn, which is what really got me into reselling sneakers, was called Reselling 150 Sneakers in One Night. This video showed Blake's friend shipping a bunch of shoes that he just got from the Nike outlet. After seeing this, I wanted to try it. So I went to the Nike outlet soon after. 
I was buying pairs for way under retail and reselling them on apps like StockX and Goat. I ended up selling my entire sneaker collection on Goat for probably around $1,500 to $3,000. This is what really jump-started my reselling career. I quit Chick-fil-A about a year after working there because I was making what I made in a month or two at Chick-fil-A in a day. This was my first and only real job. Now reselling full-time, it was difficult at first and took years to really build it up. But I would buy used pairs on Facebook Marketplace a lot and resell them on Instagram and Goat. Sometimes I would even go to sneaker shows. At that point, I really started to build up my reselling career on Instagram and even bought from other resellers on there. Then after doing that for a couple years, in May 2020, my dad got a job offer in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, which would forever change my life, little did I know. After being in Pennsylvania for a couple months, not knowing anyone, I knew I couldn't keep doing that and something had to change. My dream of owning my own sneaker store really started to sink in. So in July 2020, I announced that I'd be opening my own store in York, Pennsylvania. Now this was much harder than I thought. It took countless hours and headaches working at the store, trying to get permits, inspections, documents signed, etc. As I struggled to work through the pandemic that had recently struck the world and closed everything down, I poured every cent I had into building the store all from my own pocket from reselling from the last few years. I spent about $15,000 on upfront expenses and had about $35,000 in inventory, barely over 100 pairs. That was everything I had, so failure wasn't an option. It had to work out. Then came October and I was finally ready to open the store with the shelves barely stocked and next to no money to buy inventory with. I thought that night that everything needed to work because I had no backup plan. I never found value or was interested in school as a kid, so I never intended on going to college. I always wanted to own my own business. Welcome back to my sneaker reaction channel. Today we're going to be reacting to Cam's Kicks. I got a special video for y'all today. Y'all see the drip, man. Y'all see the hoodie. Cam's Kicks here. Make sure you guys show some love to Cam. Cam's Kicks. Cam's Kicks. I know everybody knows who Cam's Kicks is. So if you don't know, Cam Kicks. It was blowing up right now. Has been blowing up on YouTube. All over YouTube. Cam's Kick. Gotten, I think, close to 60,000 subscribers within maybe a month and a half, which is... I... This is mind-blowing to me. All right, guys, so I'm here with Cam Kicks. How you doing, man? Good, man. 27K, 35K, 16K, 29K, 27 Like, Cam Kicks. Got a really cool and kind of different video. Literally, for the past, like, five days, I have been waiting for his videos to be uploaded every single day. I'm actually taking them to the sneaker store of another sneaker YouTuber. His channel's name is Cam Kicks. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Seth Fowler. I'm here at Cam Kicks. After opening this store, my views and subscribers started to skyrocket, going from a few hundred to a few thousand in a matter of days. My grand opening video now has over a hundred thousand views, and my videos on my channel have now reached as much as nearly one million views. I am absolutely beyond blessed to be put in the position I'm in today. Without you guys' support, none of this would be possible. I'm simply showing you that dreams really do come true. If you work hard enough in life, you can achieve anything. All right, guys, so this next part of the video, I want to kind of talk about everything that's going on. So yes, Cam's Kicks was bought out by Impossible Kicks. You guys saw the last video. Sorry for the lack of uploads, but I'm going to get back on the videos and going to start making videos for you guys again. Some people are saying that that's selling out. In my opinion, I don't think it is because ultimately when you build up a business, your end goal is to build it up so much that you can sell it. And that's what I ultimately did. So I'm very happy with my decision. I think it's going to be great for the long run. And a lot of people are wondering about the content as well. Yes, I'm still going to be bringing you guys content. That doesn't mean that the content's going to change it all. It only means that it's going to be bigger and better because the amount of money that's going to go into the channel and that's going to be reinvested back into that is going to be so much more than I could have ever done on my own. So I'm very excited for what the channel is going to do because I'm going to go back to doing almost daily videos. That's the goal. We're going to see what we can do with that, but there's going to be so much money going into the channel and the videos are just going to be insane because Kobe Swap Meet, which is going to be the next big video with them is March 12th. We're going to be spending $300,000. It's going to be insane. So it's going to be amongst me and probably four to six people total. We'll have 
have about fifty to sixty thousand dollars each and we're all gonna have a GoPro I'm gonna be filming on a better camera but they'll be filming their perspective as well showing you guys all their deals but we're gonna spend three hundred thousand dollars so you guys definitely aren't gonna want to miss that video and something else that I want to clear up is a lot of people have been feeling a certain way about Alexa and I just want to clear the air about that because she is absolutely amazing she has done so much for me and more than I could ever even thank her for I'll just start at the beginning so when I moved to Dallas the store was not in any shape or form ready to be open by November 13th I was honestly getting scared we were down to the last couple weeks and I didn't think I was gonna be able to open on time someone who I will not name whose previous job was to help me with that type of thing was just sitting around doing nothing while the store wasn't being open so luckily Alexa stepped in and not expecting anything didn't get compensated at all helped so much she found contractors that built the wall she did so much behind the scenes that helped us be able to actually open the store because without her the store might still not be open honestly or it might have been open a couple months later so I'm so glad that she was able to do that for me and just some of the things she's done has just gone above and beyond so I could never thank her enough and just some other things like she's literally saved me hundreds of thousands of dollars on taxes she found the best accountant that did so well for me and I'm so glad and so grateful that she was able to do that as well and she's just always been there for me she's so supportive so I really hate to see how everyone's so negative towards her because she really is an amazing individual and if you guys met her in person I guarantee your opinion would definitely be changed and I'm glad that she definitely does have some support but definitely the negativity outweighs the good sometimes so I just want to clear that up as well because she truly is the best and I definitely wouldn't be anywhere where I am today a lot of people say that the business failed because of her and that was not at all true and the business didn't fail because I ultimately ended up selling it and she just helped so much along the way so thank you Alexa I couldn't do it without you and I'm excited for the future guys you definitely have some things to look forward to I'm gonna be managing the store in West Hartford Connecticut starting in March so if you guys still want to see me you guys are definitely gonna want to come check out the store because there's gonna be a lot of great content coming to that store I'm still gonna be traveling a lot going to the other locations of impossible kicks and my plan is that I'm gonna be managing the store in Nashville Tennessee that one doesn't open until August so I'll probably be moving there in July but I am moving to Connecticut in March and then March 5th I'm gonna be in Troy Michigan at their grand opening so you guys are definitely gonna want to be there too I bet it's gonna be a crazy grand opening so many people are gonna come out and like I said March 12th Kobe swap me thank you guys so much to everyone who's continuing to support me like I said the channel is only gonna get bigger and better now the last part of the video we all filmed the top five sneakers that are in our collection everyone that was on the cams kicks team so you guys are definitely gonna want to stay tuned for that and as far as Danny and Ronnie and possible kicks is gonna be hiring them as well they're gonna manage their own stores Danny's gonna start off in Miami and Ronnie's gonna start off in Troy Michigan so it's still gonna be cool I think you guys will still see them on the channel from time to time but again thank you guys so much and stay tuned for this top five sneaker collection What is up guys? Hey, what's up guys? Hi, right, what's up guys? Yo, what's up guys? It's Cam's Kicks here bringing you guys another video. It's Alexa. It's it's Ron Bond 13. Boy, Arely Danny. You already know what the good vibes are. So today we're bringing you a bit of a different video. We're gonna be doing everybody on the teams, myself included. Favorites in my collection, my top five. Top five shoes in their sneaker collections. Now, this is gonna be my top five shoe collection. We're gonna be talking about our personal favorite shoes out of five. Let's get right off to the first pair. So first. My first one. So we'll start with these ones. Fire shoe, man. The Panda Dunk Lows. Cam apparently doesn't call these pandas no more. He calls them black and white dunks, but shout out to Cam. This is always gonna have memories for me. We went to Statement. I have my Jordan 1 Mochas. I love this shoe. I was actually very late to getting this shoe. I just got it a few months ago at Cam's Kicks, actually. Solid shoe, I love it. Let's talk about some sea foam. So shout out to Saturn. She was actually the first female who's ever gifted me a pair of Jordan 1. So definitely was a vibe. So this is the reason why I keep these. Let's go to the next one. All right, we got the Nike Dunk Low Syracuse. This is one of my favorite dunks. I really like low top shoes lately and dunks included. This one's pretty cool because Alexa and I have matching pairs of these. I wore these when I went back to York to visit the store for a little bit, so I have some good memories in these. I went to Cracker Barrel, that was fun. I love Cracker Barrel. Comment down below if you guys like Cracker Barrel, where your favorite restaurant to eat at is, but yeah, I definitely like this shoe. Pretty clean and I actually put the white laces in. Comment down below too if you guys would wear these with the orange or the white laces, but I like the white laces just because it matches the tongue and I think it's a pretty clean shoe. Oh, I love this shoe. Maybe my favorite that I have just because it has a lot of meaning and a lot of, oh, there we go. Has a lot of stories behind it, a lot of memories, really good memories, some really bad memories. <laughs> but no, I'm just playing. I love orange. It's one of my favorite colors. I love bright colors, so love this dunk. I, I love dunks. That's probably my thing right now. Shout out to Cam's Kicks. He actually bought this on my... 23rd birthday so last year shout out to him you know these are my beaters i love my mineral blue foam runners so whew. man 
Y'all see the bottom of these? Bro, these are like one of my favorite shoes. The foam runners, I want to have a whole collection of just straight foam runners. I want to eventually get all the colorways. The vermilions, the moon grays is definitely something I have my eye out on. So if you have a size 11, I need those. All right, the next shoe. This is probably one of my favorite shoes of all time. It's one of my most worn pairs. As you guys can see, it's very worn and I got them pre-owned. They didn't even come with the box. I got them off goat, so, but I definitely put a lot more wear into them. This is the Adidas Yeezy 350 V1 Turtle Dove and this is probably my favorite Yeezy of all time. Maybe, I don't know, I, I really do like the Solar Yeezy 2s, the Nike ones, but definitely my favorite Adidas Yeezy. This is the first Yeezy to come out. Well, first V1, I think there's a couple other Adidas Yeezys that came out before this, but first Yeezy 350 V1 that came out. And the reason this shoe is so special too is because this was probably one of the best days of my life, honestly. The first time I wore this shoe was Dallas Sneaker Con, and I have some great memories there. We spent $60,000. That was honestly probably one of the best sneaker shows we ever went to. Such a crazy event. And yeah, that's pretty much everything for this shoe. Off-white, University Gold, I think is what it's called. I've said the name wrong and got obliterated for it. So I love this shoe. I am a big navy blue fan and it's kind of hard to match stuff with, but I do have some navy blue. So when I bust out the navy, this is a go-to. I've only worn this shoe once too. I wore it when Sneaker Tech and Sneaker Hen, when they were here. It's my only off-white, but I'm glad I have this one. It's probably my favorite of the ones that look like this, if you know what I mean. <laughs> you know, and I like the green one. So yeah, this one. I don't know if you can call this a shoe, but like they're the Yeezy Slides. These are the Desert Sands. I think they were one of the original releases of the Yeezy Slides. First ever pair of Yeezy Slides that I bought. All right, cool grays. I think this is literally the best release of 2021. I've always wanted these since I was a kid. The first Jordan 11 I actually got my hands on was the Bread 11s. I always loved the silhouette of the 11s when I was younger, but back then I wasn't able to afford getting them, you know? So it was just amazing to actually get my hand on these. But shout out to Cam, I got these actually from somebody that sold them to us. All right, guys, the next shoe. This shoe is definitely very special to me, too. Shout out to Pops Kicks. He actually got this for me for Christmas, December 2016. So I've had this shoe. This is probably one of the shoes I've had the longest. Six years now, I think, something like that. That's pretty crazy. This is the Jordan 4 White Cement 2016. Has the Nike Air on the back. I love the Nike Air. And this is just such a classic retro. Definitely a really clean pair of fours. This used to be my favorite pair of shoes of all time. Now I have a couple other shoes I like better. I don't really wear these as much, but I definitely got a ton of wear out of this pair. And it's just such a clean pair of Jordan 4s. Can never go wrong with this one, just such a classic shoe. And yeah, that's pretty much everything for this one. Next is a shoe that I personally love, but it's not really like a hype sneaker. I like it. I don't think you can find these at Cam's Kicks. Maybe, who knows? But Alexander McQueen's. I've been recently loving like designer type shoes too. So it's kind of making its way into like the sneaker culture. Like these are simple, plain. I always tell people if I really like a shoe, I don't wear it a lot. I've worn this once. Very uncomfortable, not gonna lie. Terribly uncomfortable. They will hurt your feet. They're cute, they're casual. And like, if you're going to a meeting, I go to a lot of meetings. I have to look professional sometimes. A good McQueen will do you right. It will make you like five or six inches taller. Literally, it makes me so tall. So that's a good thing if you're trying to be real tall or if you're not, probably don't get these. We got my most important pair ever in my collection. And we have the Jordan 4 Black Cat. Shout out to Jay. I forgot your Instagram tag, but he's actually a supporter of the channel. And he heard that I loved Black Cats. So he was able to, and I got it for the steal. They're going for like close to a thousand. I got them for 350. Literally like new, like crazy. Woo. I remember back in the day, I never really liked Jordan ones. I used to hate them because I didn't like the way that they would look on my feet. But this is actually the first Jordan one that I bought from Cam, the bread toe. I traded in my Supreme SB Dunk, the black one. So I traded it for this and got some cash on top, obviously, because I would be stupid not to, but definitely a fire Jordan one. All right, so next pair of shoes, I actually turned this one into kind of a beater, which is crazy because it is kind of an expensive shoe. Uh, I got this one on GOAT. They had like this sale. When they first released, they had all pairs for $1,300 across the board. Now they're like $1,500, $1,600. So, I mean, that's still pretty expensive, but I definitely got my wear out of them. They're very worn. I wear these like almost every day because again, I really like low top shoes lately and Jordan 1 Lowe's are one of my favorite silhouettes. This might be crazy, but I actually like Jordan 1 Lowe's better than Dunks. I feel like they're more comfortable and just the silhouette's a little bit better. So this is the Jordan 1 Low Fragment Travis Scott. Really clean shoe and can never go wrong with this one so last but not least my most worn shoe in my collection by far and i guess maybe even my favorite because i really love this shoe my yeezy slides let me tell you i've like beat these like i didn't even know that you could like crease them but there's like little baby creases all over i wear these literally every single day as soon as i wake up i literally have them by my bed i just 
go into my Yeezy slides because you know I want to feel like I'm walking on a pillow all day. I actually got them for Christmas. Um, so shout out to you. <laughs> I love having heat on the feet, you know, I had to pull out. Well, something slight today, no. But yeah, those are my top five. I feel like this shoe is a Vance. It's a classic white one, you know. I think there was like a, a trend going on at the time about white Vans when I first got these. Shout out to Mr. Day and Night. I think it's the customizer who did these shoes. They're Rick and Morty inspired shoes. My first ever customs and I beat them up pretty heavily, but these are my last favorite shoes. So thank you so much. Last but not least, man, these Jordan 1 mochas, man, they're very near and dear to my heart. As you can see, they don't have laces in them. Reason being is because I always swap my laces, whether it's the black, or the cream laces. I've seen people put pink laces in them. But the story behind this one is a very good friend of mine actually got these for me for Christmas. And I appreciate her so much for being able to get me these. But that's my top five Jordan collection, shoe collection, I should say. All right, last but certainly not least, my favorite pair of shoes of all time. I've had so many personal pairs. I resold them, bought them again, because they used to go for a lot less and the price just keeps going up. But this is the Nike Air Max 197 Sean Witherspoon. Such a clean pair of shoes. It's really cool because this is the only Air Max that has the silhouette of the 97 upper and then it has the outsole of the Air Max one. So it's kind of like a fusion shoe. Like if you guys see like the Jordan fusions, that's not a very good shoe in my opinion, but this is a great fusion. Definitely one of the best fusions I've seen Nike ever do. Such a cool shoe. It has a wave patch on the tongue that's removable. It has gold and silver lace tips, corduroy all over the upper. And Sean Witherspoon, for anyone that doesn't know, he's the owner of round two. So he actually won the Nike Air Max Day competition. He got to design his own Air Max and this is the one that he ended up picking and just such a nice shoe. You can never go wrong with this. I even made this shoe my logo. Pop up the Cam's Kicks logo right there. And yeah, that's pretty much it. This is such a nice shoe. Can never go wrong with it. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Let us know if you guys want to see more sneaker collection videos or shoes that we have in our collection kind of videos like that. And make sure to like, comment, and share this video. If you're not already subscribed, I don't know what you're doing. You gotta hit that subscribe button down below. Turn on the post notification bell. And also, follow us on Instagram at The Real Cameron Peroni. Thank you guys so much for watching and have a great night.